Camping has been a part of American culture for decades as an inexpensive way to take a family vacation. There have been many memories made while camping, hiking, and sitting around the campfire telling scary stories and enjoying s'mores. Eventually, you head to your sleeping bag in complete darkness, in the middle of the woods. While you lay there listening to all kinds of strange noises, you suddenly remember that this campground is one of the haunted ones, and those strange noises just might be the local spirit. Camp Rutledge is located in Hard Labor State Park between the towns of Boswick and Rutledge, Georgia. It is one of two group camps situated on the lake and its history born out of bloodshed. During the early years before becoming a camp, settlers and natives lived near one another and would often trade goods among themselves. The settlers traded guns, knives, axes, cotton cloth, and metal tools for deer skin, which caused an overhunting and decline of the local deer population. At the beginning of the 19th century, the settlers were hunting one side of the lake and the natives on the other, which tended to make hunting season a very dangerous time. Many believe this is what led to the Morgan County Massacre. On November 6, 1813, a group of natives attacked several settlers who lived on the farms around the lake. The only survivor was Lewis Brantley. Among the dead were Brantley's wife, son, a slave girl, and two other unnamed adults. General Andrew did defeat the natives and in 1839 they were marched to Oklahoma along the Trail of Tears. Brantley recovered, sold his farm, and moved to Atlanta in 1832, where he remarried and had two more children. He died in 1836. According to legends, the ghost of a little boy named Ethan likes to play catch and will roll a ghostly red ball your way. He is reported to be a boy who had wandered away from the campsite while on vacation in 1973. The boy's body has never been found. Another spirit that is reported is of another little boy. A camper said that he saw this ghostly boy staring at him from behind a tree where the camper had just recently stumbled over three broken headstones in what appeared to be a small cemetery within the camp. Other reports include a ghostly man wandering around the camp at night, knocking on the sides of cabins or angrily slamming the doors. Antietam Creek Campground in Maryland is nestled between the CNO Canal and the Potomac River just a few miles from the Antietam battlefield. The Battle of Antietam, also known as the Battle of Sharpsburg, took place on September 17, 1862, and was the bloodiest single-day battle of the Civil War. General Robert E. Lee and the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia clashed with General George McClellan and the Union Army of the Potomac in what was described as the deadliest, bloodiest day ever witnessed. With over 23,000 deaths during the battle, it's no surprise this beautiful campsite is haunted. Visitors have reported seeing ghost soldiers marching through the site, as well as the sounds of guns, cannons, and drumming. Land between the lakes in Kentucky has over 300 miles of underdeveloped shoreline and over 500 miles of trails to explore. As for camping, there are four developed campgrounds, as well as basic camping areas. Or, if you really want to rough it, you can camp next to the water's edge or in the woods all on your own. These are indeed beautiful camping spots scattered across the area and each has its own creepy scary legend 
some tied to the Native Americans that called the area home, the Civil War history of the region, a phantom trucker, the Vampire Hotel, and of course, the Beast of LBL. These hills have become a haven for the creepy and weird. According to legends, on both the 6880 or the Trace, people have been reporting for years of being followed by otherworldly headlights that suddenly disappear. As you move further into the woods, there are claims that Civil War soldiers still wander the lands, unaware the war has ended. Others claim to see the spirits of slaves around LBL thought to be runaways or some of the soldiers who fought for their freedom but are still bitter over the injustices. Of course, there are rumors of the recreation area being a vampire hotel. It is said that Roderick Farrell, who claimed to be a 500-year-old vampire, met with his clan here after he killed a Florida couple. It is rumored that the recreation center is cursed. Then you have the famous Beast of LBL. People who camp on the northeast side of Lake Barkley often report a sudden sense of dread for unknown reasons. Tales from Native Americans tell of a wolf dog-like creature that walks on two legs like a man who inhabits the area. There are also stories of hikers and campers being mutilated by the beast. North Bend State Park is named for the horseshoe curve of the North Fork of the Hughes River and is located near Cairo and Harrisville, West Virginia. North Bend is best known for the 72-mile North Bend Rail Trail and, of course, several phantom visitors. One such legend is about a headless ghostly figure. According to legends, around the turn of the century, before the park was established, the area was home to an oil boom, and oil wells dotted the countryside. Near the site of the Jug Handle Campground, a horrific accident happened when an oil well exploded, killing one of the workers by blowing his head off. When his body was gathered for burial, his head was never found. A few years later, a man who was transporting oil workers in his wagon felt an unexpected bump like somebody climbing up to hitch a ride. At the time, the wagon did not have any other passengers. When the driver went to check, he saw a man on board without a head. Another legend attached to the area is of a blind man, Ed Coon, who is said to have lived near where the park's entrance is today. Legends say he was married to a really mean woman and his mother-in-law was living with them. Needless to say, Ed was very unhappy with his life and hung himself by a tree. Today, people report seeing Ed hanging from a tree at the entrance in their headlights. There have also been reports of Ed on the gravel path leading to the lodge. Teens parking near the entrance have reported hearing a pounding on their vehicles, but when they get out to check, all they find are handprints on their cars. Point Lookout in Scotland, Maryland is located on a point of land where the Potomac River flows into the Chesapeake Bay at the southernmost tip of the state. This secluded area is full of history and a place of many disasters and tragedies. It was once the site of a Civil War hospital, prisoner of war camp, refugee camp for runaway and freed slaves, shipwrecks, and even a hotel that burnt to the ground. Even before being settled, the local Native American tribes used the area for thousands of years as hunting and fishing grounds. In 1634, Four, Leonard Calvert built a manor house just a few miles north of Point Lookout and established the colony of St. Mary City, which became Maryland's first capital. When Protestant sympathies turned against the Catholics, the original families were driven out. 
Finally, when the state capital was moved to Annapolis, St. Mary's City was forgotten and the town disappeared. During the Revolutionary War, 70 British Armada ships were prevented from sailing up the Potomac River here, and during the War of 1812, Point Lookout earned its name by providing a watch post for spotting British ships. Eventually, a lighthouse was built in 1830. During the Civil War, Union troops occupied Point Lookout and built a prisoner of war camp and hospital for the wounded from the Gettysburg Battle. The isolation of the area made escape attempts from Confederate prisoners almost impossible. The hospital was shut down shortly after the Civil War ended. Camp Hoffman, the Confederate prisoner of war camp, was built to contain 10,000 prisoners, but it is believed that over 50,000 prisoners were held here. Many prisoners were held in open air camps in tattered tents. Conditions were anything but ideal with hot and mosquito infested summers, freezing cold winters, crowded and dirty conditions from overcrowding, and even reports of contaminated water and spoiled food. It is estimated that between 3,000 and 8,000 prisoners died while here and were buried in a mass grave. With more than 3,000 deaths on the ground, many spooky tales swirl around this historic location. The historic park is very picturesque during the day, with many picnic areas, water views, and even 143 wooded campsites and cabins. But, as with many locations that has seen so much tragedy and death, when day turns to night, things take on a creepier vibe. Campers have reported numerous unusual happenings, including a man dressed in Civil War clothing, holding a bayonet, pacing back and forth inside the lighthouse fence, as if guarding it. At sunset on the beach, others have reported seeing a ghostly figure walk into the water and then vanish. The most frequently reported ghost at Point Lookout is of a man in Civil War era clothing crossing the road where the smallpox unit once was. He is described as wearing a ragged, homespun clothing and smelling like mildew and gunpowder. He is believed to have been a Confederate soldier attempting to escape. Other campers have reported hearing phantom footsteps and disembodied voices at various locations throughout the ground. Natchez Trace is one of Mississippi's most notable attractions and is known for its beautiful sights, but this historic piece of land has a darker side. The Natchez Trace is thousands of years old and was the main route for transportation, attracting traders, missionaries, early settlers, and natives, which also attracted criminals trying to take advantage of these travelers along the route. A variety of crimes were known to have happened on the trace, ranging from robbery to murder. The route was even nicknamed the Devil's Backbone. The Natchez Trace was also said to attract evil of a different kind. Near the Witch Dance Campground, it is said to be a location where witches would come at night and conduct ritual dances. According to legends, Wherever the witches touched the ground in their dance, the grass withered and died, never to grow again. There are still patches of scorched earth today. Many believe that evil will befall anyone who sets foot on these patches. Even before the legends of the witch dance, the land was occupied by two different Native American tribes who buried their ancestors nearby. According to legends, chanting and beating drums can still be heard on full moon nights. But if you hear the evil screeching and wailing, you should go the opposite way, fast.
Fort Monroe was built in the 1800s as a strategic defense point near the Chesapeake Bay and was known as Freedom's Fortress. It has seen its share of conflict, including the Civil War and both World Wars. Due to the violent history, it is also rumored to be haunted by several prominent figures, including Edgar Allan Poe, Jefferson Davis, Ulysses S. Grant, and even Abraham Lincoln. Fort Monroe was one of the only strongholds not captured by the Confederate Army during the Civil War and was a place the first enslaved Africans arrived and traded for supplies and food. Later, slaves escaping to freedom sought shelter here. Many wars and conflicts were planned by presidents and military men at Fort Monroe. It was also home to several artillery schools and was said to have housed some infamous prisoners during its long history. With this kind of history, it is no wonder it is rumored to be haunted by ghosts from the past, keeping watch over the area. There have been reports of a lady in white wandering near the old Chamberlain Hotel, which is now a retirement community. According to legends, she was a young wife of a much older captain stationed at the fort and was unhappy in her marriage. For comfort, she sought a lover. The captain found out about the affair and caught the two in bed together. He shot and killed her on the spot. Since her death, there have been reports of a ghost-like figure wearing a white nightgown, roaming the surrounding areas of Fort Monroe, looking for her lover. Edgar Allan Poe was a soldier for a short time and was stationed at Fort Monroe under the name Edgar A. Perry. Because he really wasn't suited for military life, he requested a discharge and then attended West Point Academy. When he visited the fort 20 years later, he requested the company of a young woman who he would read his poetry to. According to legends, his ghostly figure has been seen sitting on the porch of the Chamberlain, reading to a young lady. Former President Abraham Lincoln lived at Fort Monroe at quarters number one in 1862. It is said that this is where he planned the attack on Norfolk. His apparition has been reported to be seen standing by a fireplace, preoccupied and thinking. In 1865, Jefferson Davis was imprisoned for treason for planning the assassination of President Lincoln. He was locked in the casement at Fort Monroe. Davis is said to have been taken for walks in the evening and his wife would watch from a nearby window to ensure his safety. Today, there are reports of a ghostly woman watching out the window near the casement. It has been reported that the window there would vibrate when her spirit is present. Others have reported to see what they believe is the spirit of Davis walking at night on the ramparts. Four Mile Creek Campground is located in the Montgomery Bell State Park in Dickinson County, Tennessee. The campground has 111 sites and most have electric hookup. Campers have a variety of recreation activities they can enjoy, including some historic sites. But perhaps the spookiest is the 19th century cemetery that conveniently sits on a hill just above the camp. Reports from campers say that on moonless nights, the ghost of the cemetery can be seen wandering around and disembodied voices can be heard among the trees surrounding the graves. But the cemetery is not the only creepy thing surrounding this campground. There is also the wildlife, sometimes referred to as wild men of Burano. Legends say that in 1856, a circus train was passing through the area and jumped tracks. Thankfully, all the people and animals survived, but several animals did escape into the forest. Within a few days, handlers were able to catch all the animals except two, the wild men of Burano. 
trackers were brought in, but it seemed they just disappeared into thin air. Shortly after, people started reporting hearing strange howls at night and livestock was being lost. Locals began to fear there was a werewolf on the loose and called in another professional tracker, who did manage to shoot a large wolf-like animal, but it escaped back into the forest without a trace. Throughout the years, police have documented dozens of mysterious disappearances in the area, as well as 20 mutilated human carcasses and over 500 animal carcasses. People still report today of a primordial howl at night in the area of Werewolf Springs, also known as Hall Springs, not far from the cemetery. Others have also reported bear-like footprints in the area. Cape Penelope State Park has a lot to offer, including camping, biking, hiking, and touring a World War II fort. It is a beloved park by many and a ghost haven for others. According to legends, Fire Tire 12, located near the campground, is haunted by a phantom soldier still on duty. People have reported seeing the soldier-like apparition in pictures taken by the tower. Others have reported hearing the crackling, disgruntled voice of the soldier 